The Bible says that everything is a time and a season. Welcome to the month of December. It's a month to remember that there are so many things that are going to be taking place. First of all, we have school children that have just finished the exams, meticulous that have just finished the, the schooling career. We've got many people that have lost loved ones. We've got many people, women that have given birth. But more especially this morning, the month of December remembers, we remember it's a month of giving. And giving cheerfully, giving lovingly, giving with the heart, and giving with the mind this morning. So everything that has bread has to give to the Lord this morning. Amen. So this morning, before we get into the word, have you remembered somebody that is not in service this morning? Have you thought about somebody that is not in service this morning? Have you forgotten about somebody that is backslidden? Have you forgotten about somebody that needs Jesus this morning? So the month of December is the, to re uh, establish yourself as an ambassador of the kingdom of God. It's to reinstate yourself as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Yes, we've had 11 months, we have the 12th month, and we remember that a lot of celebrations will be taking place for Christmas and New Year's and Boxing Day. A lot of people will be going to town and traveling far and wide. But nevertheless, don't forget that Jesus is the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. So we've got no time to go and enjoy ourselves by good clothing, go and eat a lot. Doesn't matter what you're going to eat, drink or wear, but worry about the life which is so important. Amen. So say that this morning, can we turn to the book of Jeremiah? The book of Jeremiah this morning. Jeremiah chapter 7. And we're going to be reading from verses number 8. You see, many of us have been sidetracked with the promises of this world. Many of us have been sidetracked with the promises of this world. We have been so sidetracked that we have forgotten that we need to be in the presence of God. We've got so sidetracked and we've taken all our finances and we've placed it in what we will eat, drink and wear. But we have forgotten to actually place on record our blessings that God has given us strength and covering throughout the year. He's given us protection throughout the year. So we need to think about that very, very especially this morning. The world has a lying lip this morning. The world has a lying lip. And we know that for sure, if I talk about some of the things that we have lost our money in, we've gone to the extent of going to Black Friday. And before we know it, all our bonuses have been buying food. All our bonuses have been buying clothing. We, we have a tendency to buy everything. But the Bible says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. But more especially, we talked about this morning, it says there, in verse number 8, Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. We trust in lying words that cannot profit. You know people that make promises and don't keep them? We've got to be careful of that. And the Bible is warning us of lying lips. Lying is a sin. And we've got to be very careful on how and where and what we do concerning lying lips. False, prom uh, false promises. We've got to remember Jesus has given us life and has given us a promise that is everlasting this morning. Amen. So he says there, we all trust in lying words that cannot profit. We trust people 
We trust words of people than more than the word of God. The Bible tells me here this morning that the word of God will not return void. It will come to accomplish those things that it has been sent to accomplish. So, every time we trust in the words of man, we have something in our hearts that is not true. The promises that we carry are not true. Because man will fail you. God will not fail you. You know something? Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Lying words, you know. I, I remember some of the things that we've done growing up. In growing up, we made a lot of promises. We, we, we told people that we loved them. Eventually we left them. We never showed that love, but we left them. Many times we make promises, I'll buy you this, that and the other. We never kept to those words. And many times we said we'll do this, that and the other. We never kept to our word. So the Bible tells me here, behold, you trust in lying. And some of us are so, so good. So good in lying. That even you can't make up a lie that we speak. We, have, we, we cannot even recognize the lie from the truth. Because you're so, uh, you, 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 you're so uh, promising about what you will do, but you never fulfill those things. You know, like saying to Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior. But you're the one that has become a cutthroat to Jesus Christ. You never fulfill that mandate, you never fulfill that covenant, but you leave yourself empty and void. You leave the distance between you and God. You say, I love you, but you cannot fulfill the promise. Can you imagine a husband saying to his wife, I love you, or a wife saying to her husband, I, I love you, but then again you commit adultery and fornication. It is unfair that this world is so full of lying lips that we think that we are reacting to the right thing this morning. There's so many people and so many human beings that say they love Jesus Christ, but they are unfaithful to Jesus Christ this morning. So many people that say they are Christians, and that's what the Bible says, in, so that they say they are Christians, but they don't fulfill their promise as Christians. That's what the Bible writes in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves, turn away from their wickedness, seek my face and pray, I, God, will heal the land. Now you say you love God, but you're not prepared to keep yourself holy. Now how is that possible, dear beloved, this morning? You love God, but you don't want to keep yourself holy. Because Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. How many of our Christians have gone astray, have gone away from God? They've actually done something that is contradictory to what God says. They've committed adultery, their children are fully pregnant, and uh, they, they're out of wedlock. So many things that are taking place. People have not taken the relationship and the promise very seriously. So we look at that this morning, presenting yourself. Don't present yourself because somebody says, I've got to present myself. Present yourself because you think highly of yourself. Present yourself because your God is a sovereign God. And we trust, so the Bible says in Psalms, some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. But I will put my trust in the Lord. Be faithful unto God, until, even until the end of time. Remember, some of us love man more than we love God. We place man as a God and we make God as irrelevant in our lives. We make sure that we place God second best and man becomes first best. Everything, the pleasures of this world become first best and God becomes second best. Oh, I will decide, I will choose. And uh, you know when it comes to God, everything is about I will decide, I will choose, I'm not available. Everything about God is unreal in the world that we are living in today. Everything about God is uncertain. 
You're not certain whether you love him or you know you commented or not. How can you say you commented with lying lips? How can you say you love God with lying lips? We have more people that are in, with lying lips that are even in churches today. False prophets. False prophets are saying the wrong things today. Offense. We are prophesying to people and giving them hope unfulfilled by the word of God. God's word is not a lying word. It's a truth. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Can you say you love somebody but you don't worry about that person? Can you say you love somebody but you don't care about that person? Can you say you love somebody but you don't even make a commitment to that person? Are you so in is so into lying that you've forgotten that Satan is a father of all lies? That he become one of his byproducts? You become his uh, his messenger of lies? What did he do to Eve in the Garden of Eden? He spoke so much of lies to Eve that Eve enticed Adam. So he is the father of lies. And if ever you hear somebody lying and cannot keep to the promises, you know they are the byproduct of Satan himself. No person can lie and still say, I love the Lord. No, no person can deprive himself from being in the presence of God. You know, the Bible says, Paul says that to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I don't know who am I speaking to this morning and I don't know who is listening to this message. But I urge you by the message of God to be a careful listener to yourself. If you don't listen to what you say, you'll put yourself into deep trouble. One day you'll have to give an account on the day of judgment. Remember this, that you are an individual. You are an individual. God created you uniquely, peculiar than anybody else. But remember, you will come before God one day and give an account of why and what you have done. So I can scream and shout and go blue in my face. But if you choose not to become what God wants you to become, I'm going to die with stress and fatigue. And I will die of a heart attack. But it's the decision that Christ made. The decision that Christ made. He says in one verse in the Bible, he says to Peter, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and render unto me what is mine. In other words, render unto God. So, you render unto world, the world what belongs to the world and you render unto God. See, you live in the world but you're not of the world. You live in this world but you're not of this world. So you must remember that you have an accountability to your higher power. Even though God created you, you have to make sure that you give an account to Him and you su submit to Him in everything that you do. So, in saying that, listen what it says there. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. What of a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What of a man to gain the whole world? I got a house, I got a car, I got this, I got that, I got... You got brother all. Come to think of it, you got bugger off. Naked I came into this world, naked I will go off. I've got bugger off. I will not have anything. And when I'm going out of this world, all I have, this naked body that he will go into that casket and dust to dust and ash to ash, there he will remain. So why do you trust in lying lips? You'll have a big house, you'll have a big car. Oh, God has promised you a mansion, John 14, 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. He that believe in me, believe in the Father. In my Father's house are many mansions. So what is the purpose of you trusting and keeping a big out? Remember, that house will not go to the grave with you. That beautiful bank balance that you have will not go to the grave with you. That beautiful clothing that you have will not go to the grave with you. Remember this. Naked I come into this world, naked I will go out. The Lord give it and the Lord take it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We in the month of December. It's a time to remember the 11 months that God had seen you through. Physically, spiritually, psychologically. And guided you and protected you. But never.
nevertheless you still give up on God, you think of yourself more highly than God. Come on, beloved, this morning. I urge you by the mercies of God. Put God first, as Matthew 6 33 says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything will be added unto you. Listen, you put your trust in everything else beside God. God is not about to do his work in you if you put your trust in other things more than himself this morning. So going to verse number 9. Verse number 9 tells me this. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal, and walk after other gods whom you do not know? Come on, I want to just get into that a little bit this morning. Will you steal? Firstly, the Bible says in Exodus, thou shalt not steal. And then in Jeremiah it says, will you continue stealing? You steal. When you actually fall in love, when you marry a woman, before you can marry a person and you sleep with that person, you steal it. You have an intimate relationship with a person before you can marry that person, you steal it. Let's start with that. When something that belongs to God is taken without the permission of God, that is stealing. And then what we need to understand, let's start with the moral, the moral side of it. Let's start with the physical side of it. We have to start with you and I. Let's not look at the physical side of where we're stealing pen and pencil and stealing. Let's talk about the body itself. We steal from the body. Intimacy is taken. People are having sex before marriage without the blessing of God, without the direction of God. That is stealing. That is stealing. And that cannot be actually, that cannot be brought back. Because what do you mean? Once somebody has stolen something from you, it can never be replaced. That can never be replaced. Now let's look at that. When somebody steals your virtue, that can never be replaced. Murder. You know what? We murder one another daily. How do we murder one another? By gossiping against one another. We murder, we kill one another, we destroy one another on a daily basis. Yes, not only physical when you take somebody's life, you actually take somebody's life when you destroy them with words. Words are power, believe me. When you destroy them, when you murder them, you talk against them. Behind the back, you gossip about them. In, when in secret places you go, little folks who spoil the fire, you go about discussing one another. God is not about that. He's a transparent God. He's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. You must, you commit adultery. Common adultery. The Bible says you have committed adultery by what? By going and visiting. When you're supposed to be in the house of God, you're going and you're doing other things. You're actually selling the birthright of your, of your God. You're committing adultery with other gods. You're going and you're partying on a, on a Sabbath. You're going and doing other things, shopping on a Sabbath. You're working on that's adultery in its first its priority. You bring something to earth the body of Christ, you're committing adultery with other things. You don't realize it, but it's true. You're satisfying the flesh by doing other things. But the Bible says we've got to worship him in spirit and in truth. So we're committing adultery. Then other than that, we false, we swear falsely. I promise, Pastor. You're promising me, it means nothing to me. Promise God, it means everything to Him. Don't promise me. I can never give you a rose garden, but the garden that Jesus will give you is the garden of Gethsemane, the garden of Eden. Go back, get into the scriptures and say, I will not falsely make promises. False promises, I'll swear falsely. Oh, you know what, Pastor? I'll do this, that, and the other. Hey, listen. Beloved brothers and sisters, you can't promise me because anything that you promise me is temporary. God promised in Psalms 24, the earth is a lot and fullness thereof. And he says in the New Testament, upon this rock I will build my church in the book of John, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You can't promise me anything that God can give me. So stop swearing falsely. And what you do? You go and celebrate with others on a God given day, the Sabbath. You go and celebrate other words. You burn incense in other words. You're celebrating. 
You throwing yourself when you're supposed to be being there and worshiping God. You're burning incense. And this is what God is talking about. Swearing falsely, burning incense to God when you're enjoying the world. You know what Baal means? Other words, it's another word for Satan. You're praising Satan and everything. I praise money. You know the love of money is a root of all evil, and those that love money will be destroyed. Be careful, don't put money before God, and God will destroy you. <coughs> don't work out, don't walk after other gods. You know something? I never heard. Let me tell you something. I never heard throughout the Bible that that the, the servants of God beg for money. They, 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 they never beg for money, neither did they go to beg for clothes. They never beg for food. They never beg for anything because even in one case, Jesus before he can enter into Jerusalem, he said to his disciples, go there and fetch me the donkey. Fetch me the donkey. If anybody asks you, say that your master wants it. Because you have the authority to speak into people's lives. And what we are saying here is, we know that God is faithful, but we still go against the word of God. In all that we are doing, we are becoming more anti-Christ than Christ himself. People do not see Christ in you anymore. They don't know what Christianity, what Christianity is all about. They don't know what to see in you. I, I, I'm celebrating Christmas. I got wine and I'm dying, but there's no Christ in your wine and dying because Christ is not part of the wine and dying, beloved. Christ never came to wine and dying. He came to save that which was lost. He was born in a manger with swaddling clothes. His friends were stinking animals that were next to him. His place that he slept on was a manger. Yes, he got the most comfort of things. I don't say nothing wrong with that. But you seem to enjoy the comfort of this world more than the comfort of God being part of your life. So you know you love God whom you, know, you do not know. You serve money, you serve man, you serve this, you serve that, and you're making them God. Verse number 10 says, And then come and stand before me. You do all the wrong things and you're going to come into the house. That's what God is saying in verse number 10. You do all the wrong things and you come and stand before me in this house, which is called for my name. Now underline that word. Underline that word. If you don't know what to underline means, it means to go underneath. I like it to cover that word. If you want to do something this morning, it says, and then come and stand before me. You come and stand before me as a hypocrite, thinking that I don't know what you've done. You come into my house, you come into my house, and you come and stand before me with lying lips, and you act as though I don't know what you have done. Come on now, God is talking here this morning. He said you come into my house, but you don't know what, I, uh, what you have done. He says, you know, don't you know that I know what you have done? You come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we, we, and it's not looking out of the church, it's looking into the church, it's expressed here. We are delivered to do all these abominations. In other words, when Jesus delivered you from your sinful nature, he sent you back to go do those things again. He sent you back into the pit. He sent you back to commit adultery and fornication. So in other words, what you mean is you're coming back day after day. You need prayer. Like this, I have to emphasize on this. You keep praying and sinning. And you come to God and you want to continue saying, I love you God, I love you God. But you don't know that baptism tells me that I have now repented and accepted you as my personal savior. You still want to go doing the wrong things and you want God to bless you? Unfortunately, that's not true. God will never bless you. Don't keep going and sinning, coming back, going out, coming back, going out. God is a God of honor, beloved. Watch what you do. He's saying, we are delivered to do all these abominations. So we have been delivered to do all the wrong things. So 
So Jesus came to save you so that you go back and do all the wrong things. Take the alcohol, take the drugs, go prostitute, go do all these things. Go have parties. God sent you to do all these things. No. No. We make a mockery of the word of God. Verse number 11. Verse number 11. My heart. He said, this house, which is called on my name. This house that is called on my name has become a den of thieves. A word 
with his father. When you come into the church, the first thing that you're supposed to do is get completely into prayer, bringing the body into unity. Psalms 133 verse 1 says, How good and how pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. Some Christians don't know how to pray. They ask them to pray. They don't know. I am not to be, I am shy. A one name God is shy. When you see God, you will be shy. And he says, Depart from me, work of iniquity. I know you not. I don't want to pray. I go to church because I go to church. What have you heard? Nothing. What have you gained? Nothing. Where are you going? I don't know. You lost. You have blind martyrs. You lost. The church is there to empower you. Ephesians 4 11 to 13 says, And God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the edification of the body of Christ. When we learn to educate you and we teach you things, you must take a lesson from this and you must go on for God. You must go on praying. Go on worshiping. You must go on serving. I've known somebody. I've known somebody for years. They've been sitting in the church and after eyes were closed almost all the time. I've known people for years. Go in the church and to sleep. Ask them about the message they get, get up when the pastor is praying and benediction. Ask them when the pastor is praying and benediction. Or otherwise when it's time to give communion. You get up and you go towards or serve the communion. That's the time you get your first breakfast. That's the time you get up from your sleep, from your laziness. The church is not about that. The church is not about wandering. The church is not a lost body. It's a body that has been there all the time. It's a body of Christ. Christ the, the, the price that Christ paid was undoubtedly the most most serious price or most important price the most relevant price that anybody can pay for a human being he paid a price that you will not be able to understand dying on the cross and saying father forgive them for they know not what they do how can you turn the house of god into a den of thieves how can you do what you do how can you do it with a straight face how can you speak lies with a straight face? So we know there's white lies, black lies, blue lies. Some of them are like flies. We don't know. We are becoming rotten in our behavior. We are rotting daily. We are dying daily with our character. So it is written, Don't come here saying to me that you delivered me, O Christ. And you place me to go through abomination. I've gone to do all these things all over again. Which means Christ was never relevant. He never came to this world to save this world. He came to give you back the sins that you had. So that's absolutely nonsense. So when you come into the house of God, when you enter, your eyes should be closed. When you get into the pew, your eyes should be closed. Your attitude of prayer should be Having a connection with God, some of us go on, we talk, talk, talk to blue in the face. We get so involved in talking that we figure that we're in the house of God. God wants to talk to us, but we want to do all the talking. I hear this myself. I hear the sound of the army of the Lord coming. It's about time, it's the time is coming. And the army of the Lord is coming with Jesus Christ. Where will you be? Where will you be? Would you be somewhere enjoying the things of this world? Or would you be ready at the five wise virgins? So remember that this morning. Jesus had this said this time and time again. It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer. Too much of fun and games in the house. Too much of fun and games. I don't mind anything happening, but don't let it happen in the house of God. Don't play disco music in my church. My church is not, it's a cleanse. Don't play ungodly things. Don't speak out about ungodly things in the church. Don't talk about ungodly things in the church. 
church because the church is where God resides and that's where he finds the most important place to consult with you. Don't come and do your hanky panky business in the church. There's no place for hanky panky. If you don't, if you come to play a hanky panky, don't go to church at all because you'd rather play it on the outside and be condemned once and for all. My house shall be called house of prayer. I want you to understand today, Jesus is not about funny business. I never heard Jesus making a dip. I never heard about Jesus doing funny business. All I know that Jesus said to me in his word in John 14 says, I am the way, the truth and the life. I followed Paul on many journeys. I never saw him getting into a dim. I never I followed Peter on many journeys in the Bible. I never saw he was up to nonsense. But let me tell you today, if you call yourself the temple of God, why are you up to nonsense? Why are you bugging around with God? Why are you messing around? On this first Sunday and the last month of 2023, if you can't get your act together, be careful. It could be your last. And it's too late to cry when you are dead and gone. It's too late to pardon when you are standing before God in judgment. So I urge you today, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Because the Bible says, remember, you are the temple of God. Can you stand with me this morning? Can you stand with me this morning? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Nobody looking around. What type of temple are you this morning? What type of house are you this morning? Which family do you belong to this morning? Which God do you belong to this morning? Raise your hands and begin to pray this morning. Thank God for who he is. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Which family do you belong to? Which family do you belong to? Which house do you belong to this morning? Which God do you belong to this morning? Are you saying this morning, this very temple belongs to God, this body belongs to God. It will become the temple of the living God. God is not dead, he's alive. Don't make the temple a dead temple. Don't make it. The building doesn't matter. The building don't matter. Jesus preached on, in many instances, he preached on the seashore. He preached in the wilderness. You never find a building. You are the building. You are the one that he needs right now. So don't go looking for a building. Start looking for Jesus Christ this morning and start praying. Start praying this morning. Start praying. Don't hold back from your prayer. Start talking to him and telling him. The songwriter says, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Talk to him. We know how to talk to our colleagues. Oh, yes. We know how to talk to our bosses. Yes. We know how to talk to our friends. Yes. But we, we know how to talk to our lust and adulterers. But we don't know how to talk to our Heavenly Father. We don't know how to talk. We know how to talk to our neighbors. We know how to ask for this, that, and the other. But we don't know how to pray to God. Come on. Let us pray this morning. The Bible says, well, two or three are gathered in my name. I will be there. I will be there this morning. I'm just going to ask Mary to pray over the world this morning.
and everything that does not belong to the word of God, Father, and pray will remove in the name of Jesus. And help us, God, even as we have heard your word today, that we will act your word of God from day to day. May we live, oh God, according to the precepts that you have set out in your word for us. So bless the presence of this meeting today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Mary. I want to tell you something. We all find appointments more. We prioritize other appointments than being in the house of God. Come on, somebody should say amen. When somebody invites you to a function, you figure about the house of God. Am I right or wrong? We want to leave church and we want to go and spend time elsewhere. But I want to teach you something. If you will come with me to the book of Luke, chapter 8. If Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, I want to teach you something this morning. I want to teach you something that is so significant. Don't make excuses when you're supposed to be with believers this morning. In Luke chapter 8, verses number 19. See, preaching is not an easy task, my beloved. What I'm going to say is not an easy task for me. But the Bible says, Paul says, I have the boldness to do so because once I was lost, but now I'm found. Christ gave me the boldness to speak these words. And I have the bones to say to you and the world itself. Do not neglect the gathering of the saints. I'm going to repeat that again. I meant repeat again, which means I'm going to say it again. Do not forsake the assembling of the saints. Do not forsake going into the house of God. Because your blessing is more important than the house of God than elsewhere. Come on now. You don't get a blessing going to checkers. You don't get a blessing going to pick and pay. You don't get a blessing going to Woolworths. All they do is take your resources. But when you're in the house of God, you get fed. Eating at spur and wimpy will not feed you spiritually. But when you're in the house of God, it will transform you physically, spiritually, psychologically. So in Luke chapter 8, and reading from verses number 21, 19. And this goes on to say, let's look where Jesus was and what Jesus said. Then his mother and his brother came to him. In other words, Mary and the other brothers of Jesus came to Jesus and could not approach him because of the crowd, because Jesus was amongst believers. Are you understanding my point this morning? Jesus was amongst believers. And he was told by some who said, Your mother, listen to this very carefully. I like it in your Bible and listen to it very carefully. It said that, and he was told by some who said, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside desiring to see you. Everybody wants to see you, huh? Everybody wants to make an appointment. Listen to what Jesus has to say in verse number 21. But he said, he answered and said to them, You must have the boldness to speak this word. You must have the boldness to speak this word. Come on, somebody. You must have the boldness to speak this word. When you are in church and somebody wants you out there, you must have the boldness to speak this word. Can somebody hear me this morning? Can somebody say amen this morning? You must be able to say and have the boldness to say what Jesus said. You might say, I'm not Jesus. Yes, Jesus was a man sent by God. You're a man and a woman created by God. You will be delivered from your sinful nature. When somebody comes to disturb you from your relationship and from your church and from being there, that's why he says, My house. It's called a house of prayer. That's what I'm talking about where Jesus is right now. Jesus answered and said, look at what he says. Read the scripture with me this morning. Luke chapter 8 and verse 21. Read it. Look at your Bible this morning and see what it says. He says this. My mother and my brothers are these. Look at me when I'm talking, please. My mother and my brother are these. Who, are, who is your family today? Who is your family today? Come on, people. Who is your family today? What did Jesus say? Who is his family? Come on. Let's be real about the word we're hearing to this morning. Who is the family of Jesus? 
please come and visit us. We encourage you to be a part of the service. We know there is room at the cross for one more. If you find that room, if you are in the place, if you want to come to us, we in Rose, we at the Rose School, and we are a church that believes that Jesus is the answer. Every advantage that they may have to us. Now to you who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you for this before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To our God, who our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. All God's people said, Amen. God bless you, and see you next week at 8 a.m. Jesus is Lord.